Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The legend. Kevin Lyles. Welcome, brother. What's good? What's good? How are my guys and girls doing? You really got the big cigar early in the morning, Kevin? Uh, all like, the time. It's, 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 it's breakfast this, time, Kevin. Let, let me put this down. It's my, it's my, my coffee, man. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all drink coffee. <laughs> you know, I, I, I smoke cigars, man. Where's the yeah. whole case? I know uh, you, you got know, a whole you case know, with the, you. The case is downstairs. I got 50 in the car. You know what I mean? <laughs> How much one of those cost? <laughs> but this one is forty nine dollars. And what is that? A Cohiba? It's, it's the Atabay. It's the Atabay. Okay. You know, this is like my, my my new thing that I do, and I I love. Everybody got their vices. You know right, what right, I mean? right. And this is just one of the things that I've taken up and become a connoisseur of. True. True. Now you know. On a sad day, we want to start with uh, one of the groups that you first signed, the Migos. Man. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, one of the members' takeoff was killed. Uh. For people that don't know, I just want to go back to what made you first sign Migos? What in the Migos that made you sign? I'm talking about his personality because a lot of people just won't know, you know? Well, listen, I, and you know how I feel when you have uh, great partners. And um, first of all, my condolences mm-hmm. to um, uh, his family, um, to the Migos, and um, QC, Coach and P. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what it is since, you know, I've been in the business for 40 years to lose an artist, an employee, um, a, a family member, and he was all those things um, to them. Uh, and as I, I came up here to talk about protecting black art, I still got to talk about protecting us. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think um, we're putting ourselves in a situation uh, where we're not humanizing uh, our everyday lives. You know, where we, we, yes, we, we are superheroes, but we're still human. And the stage names are one thing, but you're somebody's son, That's you're right. somebody's brother, you um, somebody's aunt, and and a life taken too short. You you gotta understand. I literally just went through this with Rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And these are not people that I just know or listen to their music. I know them mm-hmm. personally, and so um, I didn't sign Migos. I worked with Coach and P to develop um, a group that became one of the number one groups uh, in the country. And now we're sitting here today um, saddened by another unnecessary loss uh, that's happening far too too much, uh, in my opinion. And I think it's based on on a lot of things. Um, COVID, people coming outside of COVID, lack of education, constant oppression, constant um, uh, of, of gun laws not getting passed in the right way. It's like... There's a whole host of things, but more importantly, that's somebody's son that's not here no more, man. I, you know, I got, I got a 24 year old. You know what I mean? So I, it, mm-hmm. it's it's sad. It saddens me. You know, it, to your point, there's so many socioeconomic conditions that you know just lead to crime or lead to putting people in that state of mind where something like that can happen. But you know, a lot of people feel like it, the hip hop, the music, you know, is, is has become has either become or always been a deaf lifestyle. Mm-hmm. What do you say to that? Um, I I, I, I live it. And um, I haven't killed anybody, and I consume more hip hop and been part of hip hop than most people. Um, but I, I will tell you that um, there's an issue um, that um, it, it's it's black on black crime because we were taught to be um, against each other. I had to be better than you. I had to do more than you. That's not just hip hop. That's what we've been taught. Uh, in an oppressive country that, mm-hmm. you know, the things that, that we, we shouldn't value life um, like it's meant to be valued. And for, for those of, of, of us, uh, we're black, white, green, purple, whatever color, that believe that music kills, no gun kills, lack of education, uh, lack of education kills, racism kills, white supremacy kills, those are the things. And I don't believe hip hop kills people, I, I believe people kill people. And hip hop provides a lot of opportunities for people mm-hmm. too, for the artists, for the people that work with the artists, for people that have anything to do, I think that it has done a lot for us. Some people will tell you that hip hop saved their life. Well, hip hop saved my life. I think uh, I'm sitting in a room with people that if it weren't for hip hop, you guys wouldn't be here. You can act like Breakfast Club would exist uh, without it, but um, there's, no. good, there's, <laughs> there's good and bad. No, hip hop saved my life. In, in everything, Absolutely. there's good. And, and if you think about it, I, I think, uh, as we, we talk about the protecting black art, I think we don't have enough conversations. I, I commend you, Charlemagne, and all the conversations you're having around mental health. Mm-hmm. You know, but think about these massacres that, that happen. I'm not talking about 
one person killing another person. I'm thinking, somebody thinking it's okay to take a gun and go to a school. It's okay to take a gun and go to a church. That's not hip hop. Mm -hmm. That's not rape. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. it's racism. It's, 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 it's things that uh, people have been, it's, it's, it's okay now. You know, it's okay now to let your racism out to, to everybody. You know, it's okay now to go do it because, oh, I'm just going to get locked up. But we've been locked up for 400 years and we're still, still mass incarceration. And you can't put that around a genre of music. You know what I mean? So, I guess the thought? difference is, oh, I guess the difference is, and uh, this is what we're here to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Some people will be like, well, uh, other, other people don't put it in their music. They don't celebrate it. You know, they don't glorify it through the art that they create. Uh, well, what about Johnny Cash? What about the who, guy who said, I shot the sheriff? <laughs> you know, let me mm -hmm. tell, you, I'll tell you a story. So there was a country song, and it was lyrics, and they gave it to one group of people and said, hey, it's a country artist. Here's the lyrics. And they took the same lyrics and gave it to another group of people and said, you know what? It's a rap song. Which one did people say offended people the most? The country song. No, the no, rap song. Oh, the rap song. Oh, no, yeah, I get what you're saying. But, but, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You gave him the country lyrics. Yeah, the country lyrics, but, but told him it was a rap, rap song. song. So and technically it was a country song. Right, and so I'll take it a step further. There's been a study, 500 cases where lyrics were used against uh, black and brown people, and since 1950, only four cases have been uh, of lyrics have been used. Three of them got thrown out, and one of them was overturned. Overturned, right. <laughs> and then even if you listen to heavy metal music, some of the things that they say are rock music. I remember Guns N' Roses had that song, I used to love her, but I had to kill her. Right. So come on, l l listen, it, it makes... But did, he, but did the person really kill somebody, though? Okay, and 90% of the people didn't kill, didn't kill people. The shit they talking about is entertainment. Th listen, if you want to go there, and, and I'm a person that says, as long as it's for everybody, as long as it's justice for everyone... Right. I'm cool with it, mm -hmm. but I can't. I have guys sitting behind prison. I mean, in prison right now, not even they, they're using this ra uh, uh, racial bias thing to scare jurors, to scare you know, judges, to scare the community to say, "Hey, they're rap artists. Hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. They call them King Slime, so therefore he's the head of a gang." Mm -hmm. Well, how about this, uh, uh, Atlanta? They've been Fulton County. They've been locked up for five months. Crime is still up. Rape is still up. Burglary is still up. Yeah. So what? What are we talking about? We're talking about lyrics here. Now, let's talk about it, because a lot of people would say, yeah, they agree to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But then somebody would say, like, you know, if you're a rapper mm -hmm. and you commit a crime mm -hmm. and then you rap that crime in your lyrics, you should be prosecuted for it. Okay, if you're a rapper mm -hmm. and you're snitching on yourself, you do. I do believe you should actually, the lyrics should be able to be talked to the judge and see if they could be used. But not if you can't just do it just to hold somebody. See, that's that, that's what I agree it, with that. Yeah, no, that's I agree with that. I agree with that. So that, that's, yeah, what, I, that's, I, the, I agree. that's the laws that are being. That's the laws that that's the legislation that, that Newsom signed off on. The legislation that uh, 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 Bowman and, and um, my man Hank Johnson in Atlanta is going federally. So these are things. But we got a lot of work to do right now. Uh, young Thug is sitting in prison, and he can't be a father to his six kids. He couldn't bury his man, little kid. Gunner is sitting, can't take care of his mother. These are these are pillars in the community. And if you got this, listen to what they're doing. They're taking positive things out of the community. So then you have chaos again. And when, so this this is what if you've never been to Cleveland Ave and you never talked to somebody on Cleveland Ave, then you you don't know what I'm saying. But I know that in Baltimore, because the streets there, because people know it, I know people think differently. I know when you did the back to school festival. I know when you do the, the Christmas thing, the Thanksgiving. I know people think differently, and this is what these kids were doing. Now, I did see something which I didn't understand, it, and mm -hmm. I don't know how they're getting away with it. I seen in the, in the Thug case when the prosecutor said um, he was reading the lyrics, mm -hmm. right? And the prosecutors were, were like, "Yeah," and he even says, "Fuck the judge, Your Honor." So, uh, <laughs> so just that, and I couldn't understand how they were basically saying him fucking the judge was basically saying fucking your that judge that at judge. the time. And, of course, the judge held them for longer. But how are they getting away with just using just random lyrics to make it fit for a case? They've been, they've been getting away with it since N.W.A. They've been getting away with it since uh, Ice-T. This, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years in the business right yeah. now. I've been fighting the same fight. But understand, if we let this go, I don't know if we'll have another Spike Lee. If we let this go, I don't know if we have another Steven Spielberg. I don't know if we have another uh, creator or... Or artists, if, if I we think, let this go. I think the difference with film and music is we know film is entertainment. Film is, it says this is fiction. We know this is not a real story, but rappers always base their lyrics on being real. Okay, and, and I have to tell you, um, because 
uh, uh, maybe America doesn't want to see what's happening in the uh, oppressed places, that they don't, maybe they don't want the, the news every single day. But I believe that stories, a lot of stories and uh, movies and games are created from real, uh, uh, Call of Duty. I'm for those of us who play games, what, what, there's no wars that ever happen. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the, uh, is it a, a, a simulation of wars that have happened mm-hmm. before? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go, talk about um, uh, Tony Soprano. Let's talk about Scarface. That's not, you, you, but you, those are all still fictional things. We know it's they're not, fiction. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not fictional, but what I'm saying is there was a Scarface. His, it might not have been named Scarface, but there was mm-hmm. a big drug dealer that came from somewhere that did it. There was a Tony Soprano. It might mm-hmm. not have been in that particular. There was a wire. I lived it. So mm-hmm. these things have happened. It's just that we've been programmed to say, that is that, and this is this. And Freddie Mercury, you could say you shot a man that's to watch him die. You can say that, but you can't say that in your music. That, that's the, the issue here is I think we've been programmed in a way to think it's not all creativity. And again, I preface this by saying, mm-hmm. if you said, my name is Kevin, and I kicked down your door and robbed you, and I actually went and did that, I think you are snitching on yourself and right. you should be using right. And, I, and right. I think that's, that, I think that's like what a... there's a, a point in time when, yes, if you committed this crime and then you rapped yes. about it, yes. then it should be permissible. That's all but, we've been saying. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's what we've been saying. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't be something that's used if it's something that's vague and ambiguous that maybe doesn't apply, but it's just a, a story that somebody's telling. Like, T. Grizzly put out his album, yes. and he's telling stories, and they could be fictional. It could be something based on things, you know, that he saw or experienced, or it could not. You know, T. said to me, because I think it was one of the most creative albums I've heard in a very long time to actually tell stories. He said, man, I had to watch of me saying it was me. <laughs> that I had to tell it was a story. that Because if you can slip up in any kind of way. And, and it's just saying to you, um, Charlemagne, that if, guess what? If you say something out your mouth, it could be used against you because you said it just because you're a black man or a brown person in America, and we can do that to you, but we won't do it to other people. That's the problem I have. Think mm-hmm. about the insurrection. What if that we, what black people decided to go take over the Capitol? What you think? Well, we wouldn't be having a conversation about bond, jail, jewelry. No, we'd be, be dead. dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd be dead. So to me, I just think it's it's injustice for all. And this is the first time in the history of, of our business where we put the bass signal up and we got from Coldplay to Megan to Drake to Spotify, YouTube, uh, ACLU to Color, uh, Color of Change. You got so many groups. That's it. Every... What? Listen, if, if think about it. Do you think that, uh, you know, they, you know, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say anyway. Mm-hmm. Do you think that companies would support the rhetoric I talk about white supremacy and all these things that is this? No, but the, every Universal, Warner, Sony, everybody's backing it because enough is enough. Because of, as soon as it's gonna happen, it's gonna affect every industry. Yeah. And so I applaud well, them. Kevin, what do you think is happening in Atlanta in particular? Mm-hmm. Because it feels like Atlanta has really taken this to the next like extreme level. What's happening in Atlanta? With their justice system. Seems like they're attacking rappers in Atlanta. Um, I think uh, it was New York before. It was, then it was L.A. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wherever it's the hottest music mm-hmm. bed, okay. it's, it's going to happen because it's a way to intimidate and, and, and get racial bias to jurors and people in the community. I guarantee you right now, if you put 100 people from Cleveland Ave and said, should Young Thug, is he good for the community or bad for the community? They're going to say he's, he's good for the community. The same thing with, with, with Gunna. These guys are doing things that nobody else is doing in their community, and I, I applaud them. Now, what are your thoughts on them, you know, at one time when they were trying to, quote-unquote, ban drill music and, and ban the negative type of music? What are your thoughts on, on things like that? It's it's how I feel about banning anybody from having freedom of speech, uh, banning anybody from having an opportunity to say what's going on. Um, uh, un, un, unfortunately and, and fortunately, drill music is drill music. It is happening. It's out there. And you could say, well... And okay. those are the ones that are snitching on themselves already. Yeah, you, you know, like detailing, mm-hmm. and not all of them, but a lot of them are detailing exactly what happened, who it happened to, in the videos with pictures of their ops and everything else. Like, eh. L- Listen, I, I, I can only say uh, we should be smarter as, as a people. Um, um, I believe that, you know, how can you sit and actually do something and say you did it and really did do it. You know, I, I just don't believe right. like that's the, a smart way 
to live your life. Mm-hmm. That's not fucking mm-hmm. drill or rap mm-hmm. or anything. It's not a smart way to live your life. Everything ain't for everybody. Now they were saying that you know record labels are are bad for because they're making these record singles. Those are the records that they're going for. They're going for mix show. Uh, and I know I seen a clip that was running around. It was Leo Cohen when he was up here, mm-hmm. and he was talking about how you know how yeah, we should d- play that for Kev. I don't even know if we have the clip. But I think in, in the clip, Leo was talking about um, how he knows that sometimes rappers talk about things like promoting drugs and promoting violence. But, you know, he knows it's wrong, but he still promotes it because it, it's almost like they're afraid. I don't want to take word from word. You're yeah, right. I don't exactly. wanna, I'm, uh, you're paraphrasing, but it's something yeah. along those lines. I think, I think that's a little bit of an unfair criticism to the executives, but only because artists make the music mm-hmm. and you're letting artists be artists. And then you're distributing the art they give you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I listen, uh, again, I remember when we had Onyx throw your guns in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also remember when uh, a public enemy said, fight the power. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, I also rem- I also think about um, uh, uh, one of the artists that I love, uh, Little Baby, if he did not come from where he came from, if Thug didn't say, here's money, don't do this. That's true. He wouldn't have created the bigger picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I do believe that Jay, in his journey, wouldn't be the contributing citizen and father that he is without going through that journey. Mm-hmm. I don't believe Malcolm would have been Malcolm. I don't believe you go down the nah, list of, of correct, people. Yeah. So you can't, you can't say, they used to say the same thing about jazz or Negro spiritual or race music. Mm-hmm. They used to say the same thing. This is the shit we still fighting today. But, but how do we continue to fight, right? When I look at the, I look at the judge, right, mm-hmm. in the Gunner case, right? And, and he was a brother, black mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you hear all the details where, you know, they say basically they really have no violent information on Gunner, nothing violent on Gunner, and that the fact that the, the guy that looks like us that we fight for, because we always say we want more people like us in the court system, mm-hmm. more people like us to be police officers, more people like us to be in the judicial system. Mm-hmm. And the guy that looks like us says, now nah, we're going to keep him in here. Yeah, you, you have to understand why it was a RICO charge. A RICO charge is to get affiliation. Anybody stand next to, be next to, the whole thing. And the only reason you would use a RICO charge in this particular situation is to shake the tree. Yeah. So they clearly that, don't have nothing on gun. <laughs> There's nothing listen, there. Listen, it, it, it's to shake the tree. And I, I have to be honest with you, if you African-American uh, in America, if you ain't been around it, seen it, you ain't black. And that, that's just the reality of it because we grew up not in places that... Um, people would say are safe places. So I, I can't say I haven't... I think if you're from it. a certain era. If you're from a certain era, you definitely was a, around it. Because, you know, our kids aren't around it because we've created a different life for them. Yeah, we, we've created a different life, but when you say our kids, you're talking about the 1%. You're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I only speak on the, the mm-hmm. fattest part of the, the bell curve, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that is, I, I joke with my, my, my kids, I said, I'm doing a protecting black art thing. I said, well, we're going to go to the club later, and my son and my daughter, 24, 22, they'll say... Well, who's DJing? But my 11 year old, 8 year old say the country club. So, so the reality, I, 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 yes, we are evolving, but we're still in, in the percentage of ourselves. And um, I, I just feel like um, this, this, this is not a moment in time. This is a movement. This is one of the biggest movements that we had. And I think um, we gotta be better fathers, better rappers, better human beings, better executives. And I think this is the first sign of you seeing uh, adults um, are in the room and they come from our culture. I want to go back to something else you said, Kev. Just not, just real quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why your 20 year olds don't know the country club? You've been a millionaire for a long time. What are you talking about? Uh, Why do they they don't know the country club? Charlemagne, I think they know the country club, but they also know me. And so they... They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Now, Kevin, I want to ask you since you said better executives, right? Mm-hmm. What are the, let's talk about you as an executive with your artists because we've seen you in the courtroom, we've seen you going there, taking up for your artists. We see you, you know, with Megan The Stallion supporting everything that she's doing. We see you mm-hmm. with T Grizzly at, you know, the screenings. What is the boundary between being an executive and working with these artists? Because sometimes people feel like business and what it feels like kind of a friendship sometimes gets mixed up. So what are your rules when it comes to that? Uh, I'm them. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm somebody who I, I was an artist and I know how I want to be treated. But more importantly, every person you've talked about just now, I've met their mother and their father and they said, take care of my baby. Mm. Mm. And so, I, you know, Megan's my daughter. 
you know, Doug, Gunner, T, they're, they're my, my, my sons. Uh, and, you know, Jay's my brother. You know what I mean? LL's, you know, Puff's my brother. Like, you, this is, you know, a lot of, I heard something come up, well, they, they, they don't treat us like family. You no, know, I treat my artists like family. Their stomach hurt, my stomach hurt. My stomach hurt, their stomach hurt. That's why you see me on the front lines. And I, I think we have a responsibility. See, that, that's the problem with our, our industry. Um, uh, and they want the, um, to get to reap the rewards, but they don't want to go through the bullshit. So I want, all, I, want, I want the smoke. I want it because I know if I stand next to them, it's going to make them a better person. If I help them get through it, and that's why it's a different thing to me. And I, I applaud the executives that uh, are now of coming up and understanding that it's not about sitting on the sideline. Mm-hmm. You, you, you got to be a player coach. Can't just, just be a coach and owner. I've always had respect coach. for you. I've always had the utmost respect for you. But when I saw you in the courtroom, you know, standing up for Gunner, standing up for Thug, standing up for YSL, my respect went through the roof for exactly what you just said. Because, you know, people will stand next to the artists when they're and reap the benefits get that of, plaque. of they will get yeah, that plaque. Yeah, yeah. They'll <laughs> Give reap them the that benefits check. of all that. But then when things go south, they're like, oh, they back away. So, I, I mean, I, you, you did that with no hesitation. I, I, I'll, I'll do it uh, because I, I come from it. But the, the thing of you guys know about me, uh, I'm going to always be on the front line of what's right, and especially the front line of the things that uh, I've been able to change my life and my family's uh, life with it. And, and I, I believe call me an, an executive, an activist, father, whatever you want, want, want to call me, I'm going a, I'm to a bend the, the arc of justice to, to the right side. Now, you've always been very vocal, and mm-hmm. I know Kanye was one of your artists when you were over at Def Jam. Mm-hmm. You ever picked up the phone and try to reach out to him and try to have some conversations with him? I spoke to Kanye prior to all of this new stuff going on, uh, and I, I have to tell you, man, um, I'm against racism of all kinds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm against uh, anti-Semitic rhetoric. Uh, I'm against discrimination. Uh, I'm against us not um, focusing on us being one human race. And so when you see someone going through what he's going through, um, you have to allow that moment to, I'm sure enough people's talking to him uh, to put him in a place. Kanye's not fighting uh, um, with the world, he's fighting himself right now. Mm -hmm. And the best position that I think we need to do for him is to provide love and guidance and that love and guidance has to come from different places it doesn't come from tearing people down you know it comes from helping them understand where they are in life and helping them get to the right because kanye has helped more people than he's hurt uh i think the the rhetoric is is wrong and and what he's trying to accomplish is a better way of accomplishment and everything doesn't have to be for the media things Mm -hmm. should be able to happen behind closed doors and you guys know We've moved a lot of things that you guys uh, have not even heard about because we have the relationships on all sides. Mm -hmm. I I want to go back to the Protect Black God thing. How much of the focus is being put on the artists to not record records about their criminal activity? I don't don't think um, if if I knew an artist was a criminal, uh, a a drug dealer, a murderer, or... I think that's a different com- conversation. Mm-hmm. But if I if I if I'm with an artist and he's around certain things and that's that's his environment, he he, he broke and he poor and he's prolific. I want to help him change the narrative of his family and his life. And I also want to have the conversations that I have with a lot of the OGs uh, that we have to do better mm-hmm. and we have to be in their life, um, not move out of their life uh, constantly and check them sometimes, but also listen to them. And so that that is, you know, when I when I turned fifty, I said I want to listen, I want to learn, I want to lead, and I want to love. And if it don't fall in those things, I'm just not about it. You know? Do you do you ever teach? You know, of course you teach, but I'm talking about like you do come from that era of Public Enemy. You do come from the era of socially conscious music. Do you ever tell these artists like, hey man, you might want to try to do a bigger picture? Uh, look how many records Kendrick sold. Uh, look what J Cole is doing. Have you ever done that? Um, I never say emulate. I always say tell your truth. Mm-hmm. And I believe that, uh, you know, if I would have went to Public Enemy and, and told Chuck, yo, right, fight the power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or a NWA, <laughs> uh, right? No, no. You could, These things, these are uh, moments in time that a, a record was written. If I, Marvin, right, what's going on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that, that don't come from a space of right. being told what to do. And I don't believe 
My job is to tell them what to do. My job is to provide them by the means and the education and the resources to tell their truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I promote. It, tell your truth. And if your truth is what you saw, what you did, how it was, just tell your truth because those things are the things that are going to bring and change uh, people's lives. You know what we, what we didn't ask? Um, how is Thug and Gunner doing? Like, how are they doing? I mean, you speak to them daily, I'm sure. How are they doing? How is their mental? How are they holding up? How how are they feeling? Because they, you know, they see it from a different side. Uh, don't, don't, uh, please don't take this the wrong way, but um, I can't normalize jail. I can't normalize jail. Yeah. Yo, not That's talking real. to your kid. That's real. Your mother's sick, not being able to take her something. I can't normalize how you feel. How how would you feel behind it? I know how I feel. Yeah. And if I couldn't talk to my kids, I couldn't be. I, I, my, my father's suffering through frontal lobe of dementia. Kevin talking two years. I can't be there for his last day. My what my my, my my one of my biggest ever come out is a little key pass. I can't be at the funeral. I know how I would feel. All right, all right, all right. So I will never normalize. That those four walls and that cell that hold too many black and brown people mm -hmm. uh, for uh, racist and white supremacy and all the things that uh, 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 the oppression that's been put on myself people. Yeah, I won't people know like, that. How you, how's your man in jail? He's in jail. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Do you think I mean, that time they were like he was uh, 24, uh, 23 and one, that he was down for 23, that he couldn't come out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, uh, they were uh, trying to change that for him and all that. Yeah, listen. Uh, I, I, if, could, we don't, if, you know, if the people don't know, we don't. And then we don't even know how, how people don't even know how to fight, like how to stand up, what, what, like how they can petition, how could they be a part of it, you know? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that we have to do with the midterms coming up next week, we have to vote. <laughs> we have to get out and put people in the places that understand who we are, why we are, and the things that we need. You know, we have laws that are still in place from hundreds of years ago that they think they should work in 2022. My, my cell phone from 10 years ago don't work the same way my new cell phone works. So why should we change these laws for what we are right now, for 22 and beyond? And I, and I just look at um, what can you do today? I think you need to go and make noise about this, this racist act because it's not only affecting, listen, how about this? A New York that's awarded somebody for the Malcolm X, $36 yeah. billion. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is not about lyrics. This is not about revenue. This is about a, a, a racist system, justice system, that's put there to put more brown and black people in jail. So this is bigger. This is about you getting out and voting. This is about passing legislation and pushing your congressmen, your senators, your mayors, your governors to help us protect black art. And I'm not talking about music, guys. I'm talking about your art. Mm -hmm. Your art. Your art. I'm talking about protect us. Mm -hmm. Protect us. But we also got to protect us from us. We got to protect ourselves, too. <laughs> we got to protect ourselves. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think Gunner will get out next time on bail? Because I know we've been hopeful, and it's been what four times now. That is, that, that'll that be the fifth time, right? Yeah, right. yeah. The, 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 uh, I am hopeful that um, the judge will look at these past six months and see that uh, these guys are, are not the reason crime is what it is uh, in, in Atlanta. I'm hopeful that um, now the lead prosecutor has left, and they got they they regrouping. They're trying to push the case back right now. I'm hoping that. Um, the judge a see through this whole lyric thing and allow them to have a fair trial. See, the, the thing is, I don't, I don't mind going to trial. I don't mind because I, I the, the, the guys that I know, that's not what they they do. You know what I mean? But I don't mind going to trial. But I, 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 what I mind is the racial bias that's happening because of the music and how the guys look. So do I think he he's going to get out? I pray, Angela. I pray every day. I pray every day for God to have an, an understanding and to give the understanding to the judge and even the prosecutor because I don't think this is even worthy going to trial for God. I wonder if uh, the fact that you have like all of these different RICO cases happening in Atlanta is hurting the YSL case because you do have a whole other group who were actually rapping about home invasion and stuff. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you hear it, you just feel like it's all blurred if you're just listening you know, in the public. Uh, yeah, I, uh, again, but our justice system shouldn't be blurred. Mm -hmm. And that this is the, this is the problem. This is and so if you think about the actions that are being taken, and you think about this this one area, we're going to clean uh, Atlanta, not 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 in, not in my, my 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 county. There's a lot of lot of things that we need to do. It's not locking up entrepreneurs, not locking up record labels. Again, anybody who commits a crime, I think they should be given a free trial. Also, but I think if they're rapping about it, they snitching on on themselves. Mm -hmm. And he, those those lyrics. 
should be presented to the judge, be used as evidence. But you can't just say because uh, I'm uh, I want to go to war like Russia that I want to go to war in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like no, it's mm-hmm. just that it makes mm-hmm. no sense what they're saying. So I don't believe that. I do wonder also too what changed in hip hop because it's not like you know gang affiliation is new to hip hop. So why all of a sudden now it's like okay now this leads to Rico's with the number one music in the world. When you're number one, you're, it, it, it's, it's so many things go at you. And so, so many things are heightened right now. Mm-hmm. I don't believe we'll be able to pass the, the legislation that we passed if we wanted the number one music in the world. I think you would have people scared to even come on with the movement if we wanted the number one music mm-hmm. in the world. But it's no denying who we are, why we are. You, you have to address the issues right now. And we're in a position where we can hold people accountable. You know, back when I was young, Kev, I couldn't, I couldn't say I was trying to my, on my come up. Now, I don't care. What, what are you going to do, say, do to me? I care about my people. I've always cared about my people. And I care about it to a point right now where I don't mind being on the front line and taking whatever it, it takes to get our people to understand that all we want is a free a, 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 a opportunity to be judged like everybody else mm-hmm. and not be persecuted because of the color of our skin or the lyrics that we rap. You, um, I heard that you're... Which is so it's like full circle, right? You're executive producing the Millie Vanilli biopic. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you know, I want to I want to make sure they get the story right. You know, <laughs> I got I got I, I protect I got to protect that black art black art. Even they didn't sing, I got to protect that black art. <laughs> you too. wrote for Millie, but you wrote a song that Millie. Can you break this down oh. for people who don't know? Uh, I was 16. I know you hate telling this story. Okay, yeah, people might I, be I, listening and have no too. idea. Yeah, I was 16 in love. Wrote a record. Uh, put it out, sold 100,000 copies. Girl, you know it's true. Yeah, girl, you know it's true. Two years later, I'm <laughs> watching uh, MTV and somebody uh, video comes on. I never made a video, and it was Millie Vanilli, and they sold 18 million copies. <laughs> it's the only reason I'm I'm in. I would have still wanted to, if I would have made it. I still would have probably want to be in the music business. It's mm-hmm. the only reason I got into the business of music is because I never wanted that to happen to another artist because it it it, it, it changed my life in a lot of ways, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that opportunity. So how, how did that come about? Because I don't, a lot of people are too young to remember, but Millie Vanilli was a joke for a long time. I mean, they blew up, but then it became like this big joke because of the lip-syncing thing. One of them ended up thing. actually taking his own life. Yep. Was it because of that? It was because, because of... Absolutely. He couldn't, he couldn't handle what wow. was going, going on. Like, but you have to say, I'm going to put it into perspective. They sold 18 million copies of one single. They were the biggest group at the at that time. They were the biggest. They had some bangers. They were the biggest group. You couldn't tell them anything. They were it was sex, drugs, rock and roll, all the things that you want to talk about. And when that's taken away from you, and people, and you know you're trying, uh, but you got caught up in the in, in the system in the hype. Um, some people can't deal with it the same way. And so I, I again, I wish. They would have took my call back then because they didn't take my call. They just stole my song because right. I might have been able to help them get through it. How'd you? So you, you end up having to take them to court to get paid and all that? Take them to court, man. Yeah, that's how, that's why I learned the business like I know it now. You know, because I had to take it. I was 17 years old, 18 years old. So they just stole your song that you put out, <laughs> that you sold copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so was like, crazy. What was, your, what was your name back then? It wasn't Kevin Lyle. No, it was Crime Genius. Uh, they just yeah. took Crime Genius' huh. song yeah. and wow. just sang it over and just F you. That's you. why you want to protect black art. You know what? It, it was um, um, my record was out in Germany, and you know I, I toured and went tour with Raw Bass and um, <laughs> Crime Genius. You know, and, so funny. You know, and I was you know big, and they heard it in the club, and um, the guy just went and remade the song, put two people on it, and never thought nobody would fight it. You know, I'm, I'm just a kid from Baltimore. Yeah. You know, and really, if I didn't have the resources and I didn't have the will. You know how many people uh, are, are cheated on and, and, and stolen from and they just don't have the means yeah. the, the means or the will or even... To fight, because that's a fight. That, that costs a fight. money. Oh, did it? Oh, that, did it? All that. How much did that cost you to fight that? To seven? You know what I mean? Seven grand? <laughs> no, man. They took the song. They, they, they didn't want to give it back. Seven million dollars. Yeah, that Seven was... million dollars? And when, how, what did you, you had that kind of money back then? That age. That you really was a crime over. genius. <laughs> the wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, 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 listen, guys, guys here, here's, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, uh, everything, everything is for everybody, but more importantly, um, when you're on the side of right, you have friends, you have family. That's right. Uh, you have mm-hmm. uh, lawyers that... Uh, work uh, in a sense of they'll settle the case, you know, and th- all, all those kind of things. And I was just in a 
um, I was so uh, loved in the city and loved by my family that um, we were willing to, to clear my name and, and, and get what's rightfully mine that still to this day, I'm able to to sit back and collect checks, and when I'm not here, my kids will be collecting mm-hmm. uh, checks from from the record, and and that's why, like, I, I want to be honest with you, it is why I fight uh, for us, mm-hmm. uh, um, because I, I never want that to happen, and I, I will always protect black art. No, I think listen, I think the protect black art campaign is great. The only pushback I have is literally those guys who commit crimes. Mm-hmm. And then go actually rap in detail Absolutely. about the crime they committed. Yeah. That's and, just ridiculous. And we and we we are on the same page uh, about that. And we're not saying th- those, those lyrics if they can prove A B C D. I'm with presenting it to the judge, mm-hmm. but but for the prosecutor to say because they called you King Slime, you're the leader of a gang. I'm not with that, yo. No, I'm with you, right? I'm, I'm not with, with that. He is a leader. He is a leader. He's a leader of Young Stoner Life. Of his record label. You know what I mean? Of a record label. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is a leader. You know, and so I'm sorry he, he's come up in a place where that his people has been oppressed and, you know, people have been in and out of his life in, in a way and uh, he's still learning how to be a man. I, this is like... It a, goes back to CB4. Remember CB4? Mm-hmm. Like CB4 was literally a movie Chris Rock made about rappers who, you know, started emulating the gang yes. life mm-hmm. in their music, just mm-hmm. their music, mm-hmm. just because they knew that's what would sell. Yeah, but but do you see what you just said? That, that it, it was a, it was a true story. Mm-hmm. Just wasn't their story. It just wasn't their story. Yeah, so yeah. so all, all, all I'm saying is, like, art is art, man. And, mm-hmm. and I, I want to protect it. And if we don't get these le- get the legislations passed, if we don't uh, get our um, um, congressmen and, and senators on our, on, on our page, I don't know if there's going to be another Spike Lee. He might not be able to make that movie. I don't know if you're going to be another Stephen King. He might have been able to make that novel. You know what I mean? It's, it's interesting you say that because I remember uh, I had Megan Good on my talk show last season, and she she said that, and I, I was like, nah, that ain't true. She was basically saying, like, I got to watch what character I play because nowadays people think that's really me. And I'm like, really? As an actress? And, and this, is the, this is, listen, and this is the issue. This is the issue that we have that yes, what you do and what you say is part of you, no matter if you're acting or not not acting. But if you're black and brown, it's definitely who you are. Mm-hmm. They're gonna say it's who they would not treat treat uh, they treat Denzel different than they treat Russell Crowe, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. period, because of the color of his skin. Mm-hmm. And how can people follow you and help you and get more information to to the cause that you're running? I think it's a hashtag Protect Black Art, and you can go on, online and change.org and look at the. Um, a petition. I think we over seventy thousand people mm-hmm. uh, right now. And then, uh, like I said, go out and vote. Uh, make sure your legislators, uh, your congressmen and, and senators know, and your governors, and hold them accountable. You know, let's let's hold them accountable for more than just saying, okay, we're doing this for this person, that for this person. We got to hold them accountable to put laws in that help us govern our country and govern our, even our poor communities uh, in a better way. All right. Well, Kevin Lyles. That's right. Uh, what, what is it? Genius? What is it? Crime genius. Crime genius. <laughs> yeah, don't see, do that. that We're that, not trying that, to implicate him in no, anything. No, no, don't that. No, I was not a, a crime. I was not a crime genius. I was KG, and I was in a group called New Marks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Kevin Lyles, ladies and gentlemen, the OG. We appreciate you, brother. God bless you guys. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.